The History of Manufacturing in the City of Wayne, an overview by Alfred Brock. Part 6. This is information gathered about the Benex Corporation, which also operated in the city of Wayne, Michigan. Personal anecdote has informed us that on the day that the uh, victory in World War II was announced that Bendix sent all the workers home and ceased production in the city of Wayne. Um, Bendix Aviation Corporation, a Delaware corporation with its principal office located in South Bend, Indiana, is engaged in the manufacture, distribution, and sale of airplane parts and accessories. The company owned and operated 20 manufacturing plants located in various states of the United States, including the plant located in Wayne, Michigan. During the year ending December 31, 1941, the company purchased for use in manufacture at its Wayne Division plant such raw materials as aluminum, steel, brass, and chrome, valued in excess of $1 million, approximately 90% of which was purchased from sources outside the state of Michigan and shipped to the company's Wayne Division in Wayne, Michigan. During this period, the company's Wayne Division manufactured finished products valued in excess of $2,500,000, approximately 75% of which was shipped to points outside the state of Michigan. Approximately 1,600 persons are employed or were employed at the Wayne Division plant. They made airplane carburetors in Wayne and items known as universal joints which are pictured here. It appears similar joints were manufactured by Prouty Glass and used in their wagons. They look different but appear to work in a similar fashion. You can see those devices on the wagon in the City of Wayne Historical Museum. They are located on the arm braces between the body and the carriage top. Consolidated Vulti Aircraft Corporation in Wayne, Michigan apparently assembled 518 19s and 3,509 L5 aircraft in Wayne and at the Wayne Airport Factory Terminal. This work was done by the Stinson Division of the Consolidated Vaulty Corporation. Stinson and Vaulty merged in 1940. When Consolidated and Vaulty then merged in 1943, Stinson became a division of the new company. Stinson was finally sold to Piper in 1948, completing the series of aeronautical events in the city of Wayne. We're talking about the history of manufacturing Wayne, and so just as we consider the tools and methods that were used, we cannot forget those people who helped make it all happen. After all, in Wayne, people come first. People, pride, and progress. Now, Mr. Edward Anderson Stinson, Jr., born July 11, 1893, and passing away on January 26, 1932, was an American pilot and aircraft manager, manufacturer. Eddie Stinson was the founder of Stinson Aircraft Company. At the time of his death in 1932 in an air crash, he was the world's most experienced pilot. He was born in July 11th in 1893 in Fort Payne, Alabama. His oldest sister, Catherine, was an early female aviator. Eddie wanted to fly as well and learned how to fly at the Wright School in Dayton, Ohio. Stinson started exhibition flying in 1912. In World War I, he served as a flight instructor for the United States Army Air Corps at Kelly Field. In 1921, he set a world endurance record for flight. The following year, Stinson worked as a test pilot for the Stout Engineering Company, becoming the test pilot for all the metal Stout ST-1 bombers. In 1925, Stinson led a group of Detroit investors in building a new commercial aircraft, forming the Stinson Aircraft Syndicate. The prototype SP-1 Detroiter made its first public flight 21st February 1926. This would lead to a series of successful aircraft designs built by the Stinson Aircraft Company. Mr. Stinson died from injuries sustained while making an emergency landing and a Stinson destroy Detroiter that had developed engine trouble. The aircraft's wing sheared off after striking a flagpole. The three, three other passengers were injured but survived. Eric Cord, whom we have mentioned briefly earlier in this presentation, eventually gained control of Stinson aircraft. Now, E.L. Cord, who was born in 1894 and passed away in 1974, was a leader in the United States transport during the early and middle 20th century. Cord founded the Cord Corporation in 1929 as a holding company for over 150 other companies that he controlled, mostly in the field of transportation. The corporation controlled the Auburn Automobile Company, which built the Auburn Automobile and the Cord Automobile, Lycoming Engines, Duesenberg Incorporated, New York Shipbuilding, Checker Cab, Stinson Aircraft Company, and American Airways, which later became American Airlines, amongst other holdings.
I'm bringing Mr. Cord into this course, into this discourse on the history of manufacturing in the city of Wayne because, as you can see, the things that were done here, the things that are being done here, have a wide-ranging impact. These airplanes and cars that were made here were not just copies or knockoffs of someone else's work. This is where the inventions and designs that have impacted the world and human history has happened and continues to happen. Mr. Cord was of international fame and renown and a leading figure in finance and manufacturing in his day, and he had manufacturing business interests in the city of Wayne. Now for Mr. Garfield Wood and his contributions to the city of Wayne. Garwood was born 4th of December 1880 in Mapleton, Iowa into a family of 13 children. His father was a ferry boat operator on Lake Osakis, Minnesota and Gar worked on boats from an early age. In 1911, at 31, he invented a hydraulic lift for unloading coal from rail trucks. He established the Wood Hoist Company in Detroit, Michigan, and soon became a successful businessman. Later, he changed the company name to Garwood Industries, which built racing boats, but also capitalized on experience with coal uploaders to successfully produce and market Garwood truck bodies. He had a home in Algonac, Michigan, the same city as a Christopher Smith, who was the founder of Chris Craft Boats. Well, what did we, he do here in Wayne? Let's find out. Garfield Wood liked to race boats. He knew all about boats. He could make them go fast. He also knew a lot about mechanics. He invented what is today known as the pneumatic garbage truck. The inner working of a classic refuse truck shows what we take for granted today in our modern industrial society. It is the result of long hours and hard work. The waste industry of today would not be able to generate the billions of dollars in revenue that it does without this technology. Without this technology developed right in the city of Wayne, our civilization would be something else entirely. Here is a list of patents acquired by Garfield A. Wood. This is an incomplete list. A copy of a common stock certificate is in the upper left. It shows yet another connection between capital, labor, and raw materials, all three contained in the city of Wayne. Garwood Industries was incorporated in Michigan in January 1922 as Wood Hydraulic Hoist and Body Company. The company was founded by Garfield Wood, better known as Garwood, a larger-than-life figure in the 1920s and 30s who achieved fame through speedboat racing. Garfield Wood made a fortune by inventing the first hydraulic hoist for dump trucks before the 1920s. He founded the Wood Hydraulic Hoist and Body Company to manufacture and distribute his invention. He then expanded the business to include truck equipment, bodies for trucks and trailers, cranes, pole derricks, road machinery, oil burners, water heaters, and fender guards. In December 1933, the company name was changed to Garwood Industries. Garwood Industries prospered despite the depression and years of economic recession in the 1930s. In 1934, net income was $48,688. The next year, in 1935, income grew to $684,000 and then to $911,515 in 1936. Sales also grew during these years, doubling from $4.7 million in 1934 to $9.4 million in 1936. During World War II, Garwood sales and profits soared from wartime spending. Sales in 1942 and 1943 hit new records of, of 22.9 to 37.9 million, respectively. In 1944, the company employed 3,500 people, up from 1,600 a decade earlier. Sales in 1944 were $44.4 million and net income was $1 million. The company went to buying up other manufacturing companies and at one time produced the world's largest ditching machine, a machine that digs ditches, and produced many of the devices right in the city of Wayne. And this ends Part 6.